Hey, what's up everybody? I'm here live at an event getting prepped to, uh, to start. We're getting choir mics set up and uh, choir mics can be really problematic. I'm sure a lot of you guys have choir mics. And then there's always that children's choir that wants to come out and stand in front of the speaker system. So today I'm gonna ring out the choir mics for you. I'm gonna do it live right now. I'm doing it right now. Not later, not edited ever. This is it, all of it live. So I've got these choir mics and you can see they're pretty close to the, the, uh, the front of house speakers. Let me trip it up a little bit more. Yeah, so not a whole lot of room between front of house speakers and the choir mic. So I'm gonna head back to front of house and show you how I set that up and hopefully I won't trip on the way because I'm carrying a selfie stick. So uh, yeah, ringing out choir mics, you can do this for your pastor's mic. You can do this uh, for any instrument mic. Say you've got uh, a string section or something and they're just being problematic for you and they start to feedback. Here's how you go about setting this up uh, so that you can set yourself up for success. You flip this around. Here we go. So on the screen, uh, I have um, I have Smart over here on the right, and I have the uh, the live screen, but I also have the spectrograph. So this is over time as well, and this is helpful for uh, catching those frequencies if you didn't quite catch them right away when you got that. So uh, down here, I've got my choir mics. There's aux on aux one, two, three, and four. Um, so I'm going to show you how I go about taking care of all of these at once. So I'm going to turn them up one at a time and we are going to listen to it feedback. I've got it on a VCA over here as well because that's super handy. So I push it up. All right, and so we can see this frequency here. I'll take my mouse, do it again so I can get exactly what it is. So that's 579. So I'm going to come over here on this band here and I'm going to go to about 579 I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to cut really really narrow and I might dial it in to be really precise. So that's 577. So now as I push this fader up some more, uh, let me move this over so that I can uh, show you over here. There we go. So I push this fader up more. Now the more I push up this fader a different frequency is going to start to feed back. So now that that's there that's uh, right at 325. So I'm going to take my other band. I'm going to take it real narrow. And I'm going to just dial it in because if I can see exactly what it is on the RTA, then I can start to scoop that out. Now I can push it up further and further. The more I can push this up before it feeds back, that's the more gain before feedback that I have. That's pretty hot right there. All right, so there's that frequency. We can go to 1.45K. And there we go. Pull that down. Now that mic is going to be pretty hot and I can move on to my next one. So aux two, this is flat already. So that one's a little bit lower. Uh, that's at 459. So I'm going to take this band here. 457, pretty close. Make sure my cue is really nice and narrow. I'm going to pull that down. Now, I could pull this all the way down, or I could even switch over to the notch on this console. And that notch would take it out um, pretty well. The only thing is that sometimes, if you notch out too much, you start to lose the body or the essence of that input. So when the choir actually goes up to you know sing in front of there, their voices sound kind of hollow. So you got to watch out for that. But the notch can be uh, really great. Um, you know, there's, there's even a cue control on the notch, so that's really helpful. I'm going to try this on this one and keep it real narrow because uh, it looked pretty narrow on the screen when I pushed that up. I'm going to push it up some more. And where are we going to feed back next? All right. So now we're at 365. So we're going to switch this one up here. And I don't think this bottom band doesn't go to notch. So I'm just going to keep it on constant Q and make it as about as narrow as I can. So that frequency is at 373. There we go. 365. And now I'm going to push that up some more. Oh, there we go. There's another frequency. So this is at 516. And 
This one's real close. So I'm going to go right here and again, getting as narrow as I can, as close to the frequency that I can. I'm going to pull that out some and then push it up. So again, the more I push this up, the more I can get gain out of the signals before feedback. Now, if I wasn't able to do this very well, move on to the third mic. If I wasn't able to do this well, and I only had so much gain before feedback, I could only turn up the, um, well, that one's a little wider. So that's 365 again. So that's about the same. Um, let's see, go to this one. So if I had, if I couldn't get this rung out very well, what I'd have to do is make another compromise. Basically what I'd be doing is, um, to compromise, I would have to just pull the band behind them back. So there's gonna be a full band with this. It's not gonna be just a choir and a piano or something. It's gonna be full band. And so the more that I ring this out, the more I can push that band up and have it big and full with a choir out in front and on top. Let's see, get another frequency, the feedback here. All right, again, 487-ish. And now, you also might be wondering why I'm not using a graphic EQ. Um, graphic EQs can be nice, and especially if you're in an analog system and your EQ only goes so tight. Uh, but, but really, I love when I have the chance, oh, that one's a little lower, it's at 307. So I'm going to put my bands out of order, but that's okay. And I'll go ahead and do the notch on this one and make it as narrow as I can. And put my frequency there at 311. That's close enough. And now push this up some more. And that's pretty hot. Uh, yep, and there's lighting guys walking by. So 409. In this case, let's see, what's my one band at? I'm just going to make this a little bit wider. Um, cut that a little bit more, and that's going to catch that other frequency that's feeding back as well. Now I'm going to move on to my fourth mic, which is the one closest to us. We'll see what frequency feeds back first. So the work that I'm doing now is making it able so that I can push up the band more later, which I like because whenever you can get a big band sound in front of a choir or you know with a choir, it makes it really, really nice. Uh, so that's going down, turn that down a little bit more. So graphic EQs don't get quite as precise as this. Oh, here's a second frequency going and we're at 818. So we're going to come up here, this one, make it really narrow. There's 815, that's pretty nice. Push that up. And now another one, we're at... 307. Go down my first band. So 250 now. Make that cue nice and narrow and pull that down. And now we got a couple of frequencies going on here. What's all right? 20 about 193. So I'm just going to take my fourth band, even though it's nope, not that. And Make that as narrow as possible. 193, perfect. Now, I can turn all of these up pretty loud. Yep, and we got people talking on there that we can hear plenty loud. So I'm gonna have gain for days. So that is how you set that up. So I hope that was helpful for you guys uh, to see it in real time, to see how I'm doing it. Uh, it gives a little preview of one of the ways that I'll use Smart when I'm mixing. Um, or setting up, but uh, again, Smart is a great tool, uh, but really any RTA can work. You can do this with your phone, you can do this with a free app. Uh, the more precise, the better, especially if you're using a parametric EQ. I don't know if I finished this thought earlier, uh, but if you're using a parametric EQ, you can get dialed in even finer than a one-third octave band that you would have on a graphic EQ. Uh, and the other thing that I don't love about graphic EQs is on a graphic EQ, it's, it's um, it's harder to get to more phase coherent. 
um, the bands can compete with one another and EQ actually uses phase to adjust the different frequencies up and down. So when you have two bands that are near each other that are doing opposite things, uh, it can make it phasey and weird. And although it can be a great tool to have, uh, I really prefer using a parametric EQ whenever I can rather than a graphic EQ. So hey, if you like this video, go ahead and mash thumbs up. If you're new and never watched my stuff before, welcome. Uh, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. And uh, we'll be coming out with some more stuff soon. We'll see you back here next time.